welcome you to the winds of New England as we start another weekend of Candlepin Bowling. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy and Skins, of course, today, the order of business. Joe Ashline not here for the first time all season. We have uh, Rico Baldinelli and Pat Pay uh, coming back from a terrific match a week ago. That's right. Uh, just squeezing Joe out by, I think, about eight pins. And Pat made some great shots, uh, and he deserves to come back. But uh, uh, to stay here, he's going to have to do it again. <laughs> Along with Rico and Pat, Stu Bergman and Joe Rollins will be joining us today. And for those of you who may be tuning in for the first time, or if you just need a refresher course, here once again, the outline of the rules here on Candlepin Skins. It's a little different than the regular bowling format you're accustomed to. One thing that is the same is total pinfall. Two games, though, on Candlepin Skins with four bowlers competing individually, one box at a time. Each box has a dollar value assigned. That's the skin. The high score in each box wins the skin. If the high score is tied, then the skin dollar value carries over to the next box. Now, as far as the total pinfall is concerned, two games, total pinfall, the top two finishers will return the following week. And, of course, that's how they pile up their extra prize money. Here are the dollar values. First three boxes of each game worth $10. The next three worth $15. Boxes 7, 8, and 9 worth $25. And the big 10th box in each game worth $50. So we have four bowlers ready to go, and we will get this match started here on Candlepin Skins right after these messages. Don't go away. The handshake, and we're ready to go. That's Stu right. Bergman and Joe Rollins will be first up at the line here in game one. Handshake, bell ring, come out swinging. <laughs> Stu Bergman on lane 30. And Joe Rollins, the left-hander, on lane 29. Joe was here uh, in our old doubles format. First time here on skins. Get rid of one Joe and, and as Joe and Ashline, and oh, yeah. got, got another one. And he starts with a spare. And the nine for Stu Bergman. And we'll take another look at that Joe Rollins spare as he kicks the eight and then the seven. <laughs> Rico Baldinelli drops eight. Wobbling two pin. If that fell backwards, he probably had the strike. And Pat Pay drops eight. Rico for the spare. Yes. And there will be a carryover in this first box. Rico, just like last week going by, is about his business very quietly. 288 for a two game total last week. And I kept referring to Pat Pay's uh, terrific shots, which they were, but uh, Rico just got the ordinary spare with strike on it. And that was a terrific shot from Pat Pay a moment ago to take out the one and the nine for a spare. I didn't think that was quite good enough. I was going to give him a 10. <laughs> <laughs> it was a spare. Seven on the spare for Joe Rollins. One, three, and nine pins. Doesn't convert for two in a row. And Joe takes a 10. Stu will settle for nine. Still looking for his first mark. Pat Pay. Yeah, you mentioned last week. He uh, he's kind of quiet about it as he as he usually is. Pat doesn't say a lot, either uh, during or after the match. That's right. There's the big ball right there. He does his speaking with that ball. That's strike on spare for Pat. And the skin. He didn't quite see the end of it because uh, Rico had already started, but a strike for Pat Pay. And there's a spare for Rico Baldinelli. Pat Pay will take the skin worth $20 with the strike. And here's the four horsemen for the spare for Rico Baldinelli. Just how you draw it up. Horseman right for Stu Bergman. And the three, three, four, six for 
Joe Rollins. Not quite for Joe. Stu takes his 10. And so does Joe. Now Rico and Pat Pay come up working on marks again. With the skin still to be decided. $10 skin here in the third. And Rico is off target, but boy, he got a great break on that ball. He dropped seven on the spare. Pat Pay looking for a double strike. No. Rico doesn't get the spare. So unless Pat converts this, we will have a carryover. And that's indeed what will happen. Pat takes a six on his strike. And let's see. Pat almost converted it for the 10, but there are three tens up on the board. That creates the carryover. And box number four will be worth $25. right in there by Joe Rollins and still falling just the 10 pin left and likewise on lane 29 with Stu Bergman lots of wood for Joe and he stepped up there to take a look at it looks like he should be okay covering the 10 pin he is <laughs> Stu Bergman has to do it the hard way and he slides by just slides by to the left Stu's still looking for his first mark Pat Pay in the overall lead right now. After three boxes. And also in, uh, in the lead for skins. Rico just missed the head pin, but again, a nice break. Need one of these to carry over. Uh, may still happen. Yep, for... it did for Pat. We left it because Rico through already, but Pat Pay gets the spare to create the carryover. And Rico with the eight. Well, now we'll see Pat's spare. Took a little time. Rolling off the left side wall and eventually, uh, oh, you see that pin pickup speed? <laughs> <laughs> carryover in the fourth. The fifth box is worth $40. And Stu Bergman gets a kind of a nice break, although it's not much of a lead. One, five, eight, and nine. Joe Rollins breaking it up. And the spare for Stu, his first mark. I'm sure he's happy to get that on the board. Bergman's conversion now. Got lots of help from the wood twisting in between the one and the five. Had to keep pushing back though. He had to wait to see if it would go. Rico Baldinelli off target. Pat Pay working on a spare now. And he misses the head pin also. Looks like it could be a $40 skin for Stu Bergman on that mark unless Pat Pay converts this. Oh, he oh, oh, took that money right out of his pocket. And a nine box for Rico Baldinelli. That spare will take us to a break. We'll get another look, and we will have a carryover when we return on Candlepin Skins. Back we are, and Joe Rollins starts things off in the sixth. This sixth box of carryover. $55 at stake. Right in the one, three, uh, one two pocket, but uh, leaves himself a triangle plus the seven pin. And that's a fill on Stu Bergman's spare. It's just five. Ooh, 
Just a little thin on that head pin. Ten for Joe. And eight for Stu. And they're tied at 61. Uh, they make it 71 for Joe Rollins. They're tied at 61 and 71. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what I meant to say. <laughs> Pat Bay on the head pin, but a little full on his spare. He'll take five. And Rico Baldinelli almost with the home run. Rico's been coming up short, leaving the ball to the right. That time it looked like he turned the ball over a little bit, caused the ball to break back to the left and right in the pocket, and the result was just the four pin standing. Well, that time he almost left it out there again. But that is good enough for the skin. We're at $55, and Pat Pay takes a nine. So Rico Baldinelli takes the skin in the sixth. Stu Bergman, right in the pocket, touches him all. And Joe Rollins right through the heart. Looking for a break here on the six pin, but well, it falls, but the wrong way. come back and went right in among that group of pins, but didn't hit anything. And just a seven for Joe. Gives him 78, there you go. 71 plus two balls for Stu, and 70 and 83 respectively for Rico and Pat. Rico working on a spare. And he just misses the head pin. go to Stu Bergman with a strike. It will indeed. For $25, his first skin of the day. And the spare for Rico. Fine shot. And Pat settles for seven. Take another look at that Rico Baldinelli spare. Just barely touches the head pin. Actually, the two pin stayed in play for the nine. It's uh, two in a row, and as you see, four marks for Rico in this game. Two spares in the first and second, and also in the sixth and seventh. Ooh. Joe Rollins almost with the home run ball. Stu Bergman on a strike, and... Oh, boy. Two and nine. for the spare, and he's got it. That's his third mark. And the spare for Stu. Spare on strike. So two single pin conversions there for spares. Well, it's going to take a strike to win the skin. Already been a tie with spares by both Stu and Joe. Oh, look out. Boy, that looked good enough to be a strike. Oh, how about this uh, one? That was, oh! <laughs> well, we saw three balls that looked good enough for strikes in that box, and none of them turned out to be strikes. Oh, and Rico had that ball fade on him just a little bit. It looked like he was going to convert it. And then just at the last moment, it broke off to the left. So he'll take a 10, and the skin will carry over with the two spares, making this ninth box worth $50. And we have got an extraordinarily tight match here right now. When these marks are filled in the eighth, it's going to be very, very close. Stu Bergman on his, and he will take seven. And Joe takes five. And we're going to have to have Cindy Sissom go down and check a piece of wood on Stu Bergman's lane, lane 30. 
Doesn't look like it will affect the shot at all. He's shooting at the triangle in the right. It's probably out of play anyway. And it is. Through eight boxes now, only nine pins separating first place from fourth place. Still will try to convert the six, nine, and ten triangle in the right-hand corner. Got it. Three marks in a row for Stu Bergman. And Joe finds the center. Trying to bail out now here, and he'll take seven. So a spare up on the board for Stu Bergman here in the ninth. $50 skin on the line. Rico Baldinelli fades off the head pin and he'll have the four horsemen. And the strike for the $50 skin for Pat Pay. Another look at that $50 strike. Right in the one three pocket, seven pin, and then finally the five pin. And now this 10th box is worth $50 also. Joe Rollins right through the heart. Stu Bergman working on a spare. Oh, that, that was good strike. all the way. Boy, Stu has really found the range. takes an eight for a 108. He's going to be in fourth place after game one. Stu Bergman, Dan, throwing this strike in the tenth. Stu missed a single pin for a spare in the fourth. Since then, he's had five marks in six boxes. And he almost throws the double in the tenth. And the spare. Wow. What a finish. Stu Bergman had 53 at the halfway point. He winds up with 138. And he's going to be the overall leader, maybe. 85 pins the last five boxes. That pay with the strike. And that will create a carryover. And that is a double strike for Pat Pay. for Rico Baldinelli. And he will take a 10. Well, I said Stu Bergman would be in the overall lead, and then Pat Pay goes and throws a double strike, so we'll see. Well, Stu will still be in the lead. Uh, no, he won't. No, he won't, because the seven fill on the strike Gives Pat Pay a 142, and he will take the lead by four over Stu Bergman's 138, Rico Baldinelli at 123, and Joe Rollins at 108. And we will be back with game two here on Candlepin Skins in a minute. And a quick check on today's winnings. Pat Pay and Rico Baldinelli each with four skins. Three of our four bowlers already on the tote board. Joe Rollins still looking to check in. As we move to game two, Stu Bergman leads off. And Stu with a very, very impressive finish to game one, hoping to uh, keep it going. Stu didn't want to break for that last commercial. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> when you're hot, you're hot. You want to just keep going. I don't blame him. 3-6 now. Keep that string alive. No, nope. oh, just sliding by. For the 10 box. 10 it is. By the way, we had that uh, carryover with strikes in the 10th box of game one, so this opening box in game two is worth $60, and Joe Rollins, who has yet to win a skin today. 
Chance for a spare on the three, six, and ten. Joe had three marks in game one, but only wound up with a 108. Ten box for Joe. The stage is open. If anybody puts a mark up here in this first box. Rico Baldinelli in the pocket, a little light though. And he sent that head pin spraying over to the left. Cluster of five in the left hand corner. Looking at the two, four, and seven for 10 bucks. Well, if Pat Pay can put a mark up there, he'll have himself $60. Good first ball. Kicks out the 10 pin. Yeah. Will Pat spoil the 10 boxes? And take He'd money. like to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, and Pat <laughs> turned around and gave the choke sign. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Three bowls were kind of rooting for him. Tens all the way across in the first box. What are the odds against that? <laughs> There's a lot of odds against a lot of things that go on around here sometimes. <laughs> That's incredible. Four ten boxes. Stu Bergman pulled that one to the left, but gets away with it. The one, three, and nine. Seventy dollars now, this carryover. Into the second box. Oh, no, he's got it. Fine shot. You have to make sure that the ball will hold its line on a shot like that and not get deflected, and Stu was able to make it happen. Mark number six for him. Here's a guy, Joe Rollins, Dan, an interesting story when it comes to his uh, bowling activities. Yeah, we were having him fill out the information sheet, and he said he couldn't put down a, uh, a league average. I says, well, you don't know it, or why? He says, well, <laughs> No, I actually, I just bowled 10 pin. So I promptly told him that you're not allowed on this show. <laughs> well, it's unique. Uh, he bowls at the Bover Dover Bowling Center, which everyone is, anyone who has been in there knows that it's a split house, has 10 pin and candle pin. And he used to bowl candle pin, he switched to 10 pin, he gets in the roll loss for candle pin. He says it's uh, really helped him out throwing the heavier ball. So, hmm. whatever it does, he's here. I don't know. Yep, finished fifth in the roll off with a 6.55. A 10 for Rico, and the skin belongs to Stu Bergman unless Pat Pay can do something about it. A thin hit for Pat. It's going to be a great shot to take that skin away from Stu. There is a piece of wood in between the five and the eight pin. Nope. So a $70 skin for Stu Bergman. And a seven box for Pat Pay. So you see the scores down below. Pat leading by one pin over Stu Bergman, but Stu is now going to fill the spear. So I would say he would take over the lead. Followed closely by Rico at 143 and Joe at 127. Well, just the five, Phil. Just a seven box, so it's 170 now for his 13 boxes completed. Big first ball for Joe, and he kicks out the seven pin. He's still been shut out with the skins. It'd be nice to have him put a mark up here and see it hold. He's got it right over it, all over it. 
Well, only a strike can take it away from him. And Rico's off target to the right. I should say take it away altogether. He can still be halved and with another spare. Rico, a makeable spare, not an easy one, but. Oh, he got it. Oh, he made it look easy. Great shot. Mark number five for Rico Baldinelli. No, well, Pat's thinking, well, I already got a carryover. I'm behind. I need a strike. Nice time for one. Too full. Yeah, it broke just a little sharp at the end. This ball normally breaks a little from right to left. Bob Kelly and Pop Paul Barassa will be joining us next week. They'll be here along with the first and second place finishers from today's show. A six box for Pat Fay. He had a seven before that. On Candlepin Stars and Strikes tomorrow at noon. It will be Paul Berger against Dan Broder in the semifinal round. Oh, that pin was coming back from the right side wall, but not enough to carry the eight pin. A little extra body English by Stu. He thought he had a chance. Nice 10, just avoiding that piece of wood in front of the eight pin. Joe still looking for his first skin. He's working on a spare. $25 fourth box here. After the carryover, six fill for Joe. And just sliding by the head pin. What we should have asked Joe is, does he bowl 10 pin left handed also? Because <laughs> he said it helped. I assume that must mean he bowls left handed both. <laughs> Rico working on a spare. Just catches the real light in the head pin. And in all probability, that's why he ended up with what he has. Just didn't catch enough of the head pin. Just a four fill there for Rico. Well, how often do we see that? We've had three six boxes in the last four boxes thrown here. And Pat Pay gets up, facing a carryover, and nothing but a ten box up there. Any kind of mark will win him the skin. He'll shoot at the 10, maybe. Yes, he will. No, I believe that was off the wood. That is a nine box. So the skin goes to Stu Bergman with the 10 for $25. Number five worth 15. Stu couldn't get it to come off the wall. Boy, marks all over the score sheet in game one, but they have been tough to come by here in game two so far. Amazing how it's incredible, even having seen it before on this show, how four bowlers can get hot at the same time or cool off at the same time. Joe Rollins looking for his first skin. Now he'll shoot at the four and seven pins, piece of wood in front. Shouldn't be a problem. Got the spare. Rico Baldinelli, Brooklyn side, and he will drop nine. Sure, he's looking for the strike there, trying to steal that skin away from Joe. Well, Rico's going to have to go right at the 10 pin. And he's got it with a little help from the wood. Well, 
Bat can throw a strike. You can take it. Really need to do something here. He's real struggling this second game. And that close to the strike. So we'll have a carry over here. Oh boy. And Pat misses another single. Two in a row. Does not have a mark in this third game. And it's still there. A nine box. We will take a break here on Candlepin Skins at the Londonderry Bowling Center. We'll be back. <laughs> Stu Bergman set to bowl in the sixth box, which is a carryover, $30. Stu leads the way in Skins Prize money so far, as you just saw. Oh, what a great looking ball that was. Leaving the four pin. He's had a little bit of drought. Three boxes, only a one mark in this. This is where he started last time. He only had, what, 53? That's right. <laughs> well, there he comes again. <laughs> Spare in the sixth. Did win a skin with a 10 box, though, earlier in this game. Well, critical ball for Joe. This low man right now working on the spare. And will he split it up? Yes. Certainly yeah. does oh, yeah. for the strike. <laughs> Joe's first strike of the match. I'm sure he would have been happy had just one of these gone down, but he got both of them. Got the six and the seven. There goes the six and then finally the seven for the strike. Rico also working on a spare, but just four. It's two marks this game and both times just four fills. Well, unless Pat Pay can come up and throw a strike here, Joe Rollins is going to have his first skin of the day. Now, yeah, Pat takes it away. And he got a little friendly kick off the sidewall, too, to take the five pin. Crosses over in the one-two pocket. Nine go down, and then finally, as you said, a buddy wood comes flying across <laughs> to knock the five pin down. That makes this seventh box worth $55, and Stu Bergman with just four on his spare. Stu works as an accountant at Brandeis University. Lives in Millis, Mass. with his wife, Karen, and their two-year-old daughter, Christina. And Stu takes eight. Again, the total pinfall for two games, running totals, recorded at the bottom of the screen there on the computer. So you can keep track of where everybody is. On the strike. Joe Rollins. And not quite. Nine box for Joe. Some 197. See, the scores are very, very close. Stu Bergman still out front with a 212. And Rico, who's in need of a mark, drops nine. This has been his friendly lane. Marks in the third and the fifth over here. And Make another one. Make one in the seventh now. Who's leading for this skin? Was him with one pin of uh, Joe Rollins. Pat Pay really needs to keep marking. Would love a double here to take the skin and. I was going to say give him a lead for that second spot, but like last week, kind of right down to the last few frames. The $55 skin goes to Rico Baldinelli as Pat Pay is open. And Pat has really struggled here in this game. But he continues to hold on to that second spot. Mm -hmm. 0 
only 16 pins from first to fourth right now. Stu Bergen with the half Worcester. And did he get it? No. Ten box off the cap. Well, converting the half Worcester into a ten. Not bad. Not bad. A nice out, considering. Joe is still looking for his first skin, and yet he's still in the hunt for the pinfall. Wow. Everything but the five. Ooh, a little oh, bit behind no. himself that time. Joe could really have used that mark, too, with Rico Baldinelli already or the mark up. Ten for Joe, and now Rico's fill on this spare becomes even more crucial. That's because he's 11 pins behind Pat. He's had trouble filling spares in this game, and he takes seven as he grabs another pin in the corner. Oh, well, that could be big. Can't convert it, though. And the 10. Three 10 boxes here in the eighth. It's a $25 box. And a spare or strike will win it for Pat Pay. Firing quickly, and he'll have a spare leave on the three and the six. I would like his chances here, I think. Uh, I would, too. Although he's, well, he's got a lot of confidence right now. He's not throwing the ball particularly well, but well enough to get that spare and still hanging on to that second spot. But you can see just four pins. And the skin for Pat in the eighth with the spare, $25. Stu uh, is not out of the woods here. He's been leading most of the way, but. Well, all of a sudden, he's got everybody breathing down his neck. That's right. Rico's only nine pins behind him, and Pat Pay's only five, and Joe really 15 behind him. And Stu open oh again boy. with just a seven box here in the ninth. It gets more interesting. Pat Pay, in spite of a struggle here in the second game, may be able to take the lead. Badly to the right. Joe has had back to back marks only once in this match, and he needs it to happen right now in these last two boxes. And no, there's one. There's oh, one. wow. <laughs> Did something come from the back there? What right. was that? Pin come flying back for the seven and the eight pins. Oh. Oh, just as they went into the pit area. Yeah. Just tapped it. Baldinelli has marked three times in a row on this lane. Mm, not this time, though. Boy, oh boy, this is going to be close. It certainly is. <laughs> 229, 223, 217, and 217, but Pat Pay is uh, in the driver's seat. He's got to fill a mark. Now, if Pat were to put a mark up here in the ninth, that would mean that the third and fourth place bowlers would each have marks up going into the tenth, which would create a very interesting uh, possibility here. Pat's going to do a little house cleaning on lane 30 before he rolls. He's going to be tired after he gets done doing <laughs> this. Try it again. Come on, <laughs> Pat is going to be tired. <laughs> Pat just he can't just throw it in the want, no, He just right. doesn't. I don't want. I wouldn't. He just can't do it. No, I wouldn't want to get in the habit of doing that. <laughs> He's right in the heat of battle here, and we just wore him out. <laughs> and it still is in the, in the channel. He's working on a spare fill here, which is very important. He's going to regroup here. 
Oh, he's, oh, bring broke sharp at the end. Just five. That brings him within. Now, let's see when he finishes the frame. He's going to. Uh-oh. Well, I was going to say he's going to take over the lead. He needs a couple more. For second place, that is. Wow. I wonder if they're all busy next week. <laughs> Seem like anybody wants to come back. Pat has had three seven boxes and a six box. 229, 229, 23, and 17. How much closer can we get? And 17 has a markup. That's right. So it'll come down to the 10th. By the way, we almost lost track, but Joe Rollins just won his first skin, a $25 skin in that ninth box with the spare. And the 10th box, of course, worth $50, and Stu Bergman is going to be open. My, my. So after a 138 opening game, Stu throws a 99 second game for a 237 total. Now, that may not sound very impressive, but it might be good enough. Hey! Joe Rollins finishes up the house cleaning on lane 30. And now this is a very important ball for Joe. Sure is. Needs 20 pins to tie Stu. Ooh, Ooh. Oh, Let boy. go. A little late on that one. Now he must convert this. Not to be. No. So that is going to leave Joe Rollins out of the money, I'm afraid. It's yep. certainly, th yes, definitely, because uh, Pat Pay's already at 229. The battle now is between Rico and Pat Pay. And Stu. It's possible that Stu could be the odd man out here, depending on what happens. Of course, Rico we've got with a 50 the $50 skin here that we haven't decided. Oh, only a 10 box for Joe up there. Right now, Stu, Rico, and Pat all vying for those two returning spots, and Rico puts the mark up in the 10th. And if Rico gets at least a five fill here, he's going to ensure himself a return trip next week because he'll finish no worse than second. And there it is. He will take what? An eight fill for a 118 and a two game total of 241. So you can see he's already beaten Stu Bergman. So now it comes down to Pat Pay. Pat needs nine to come back next week. Don't go away. Look oh, what a break there. Big break for there, for Pat. Remember, a $50 skin on the line. There's a spare up for Rico Baldinelli, but Pat needed a nine box in order to return next week. And he's got two balls to get one of those pins. Well. He's gonna use both of them. Oh, wait a minute. What's coming? Wow. Well. well give Rico the uh, last skin and Pat takes the 10 and he will come back next week after a 97 second game well that's about as close as you could ask 13 pins separating first and fourth once again it'll be Rico Baldinelli and Pat Pay coming back and we will come back to wrap it up on candle pin skins in a minute And welcome back to the Londonderry Bowling Center. We have wrapped up another edition of Candlepin Skins. And uh, boy, that was, that was a funny match. The scores were not uh, real big, but everybody was in it right down to the end. And uh, you got to feel bad for Stu and Joe because it was there for the taking. And they just weren't able to come up with the scores big enough at the end. Yeah, we always say we, we don't lose track of it's still a game of bowling. We have the skins on the side, but uh, we kind of forgot about the skins going down <laughs> the stretch because it was so close. Well, let's uh, check the final scores here. Uh, very, very close at the top. Just four pins separating first place from third place. Rico Baldinelli and Pat Pay advance together again for the second week in a row. Just two pins apart, and then two pins behind Pat. Stu Bergman at 237, and Joe Rollins not far back uh, in fourth place at 228. Joe's going to be thinking about that spare fill in the ninth that might have cost him a possible appearance next week. Now, the Skins prize money, Rico Baldinelli tops that list. 
Stu Bergman also in triple figures as he'll uh, leave with some consolation money. Pat and uh, Joe getting on the board as well. So Rico and Pat will be back for their third weeks next week. And they will be joined by uh, Bob Kelly and Paul Barassa. Oh, I'm telling you, two more great ones. And, uh, of course, Bob Kelly loves this format anyways. He's another <laughs> one that can throw a strike at any time, too. All right. We hope you will join us uh, next Saturday at noon, of course, for Candlepin Skins. But don't forget, tomorrow at noon, Park Place Lanes in Wyndham, Candlepin Stars and Strikes. It'll be semifinal week. And you'll want to see if Paul Berger can win his third match in a row. He'll be facing Dan Broder. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole Winds of New England crew, I'm Doug Brown. Thanks for joining us.